Hi, Nav. This is my cool gay roommate, Wallace Wells. Hi. He's gay. These are some of the big screen's best portrayals of men who love men. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 memorable gay male characters in movies. See, this is the color I want. This is Damien. He's almost too gay to function. For this list, we're looking at male characters that are identified as being homosexual in films. The characters have to be entirely fictional, however. This means that we've disqualified those based on real people, like the characters of Philadelphia, Milk, Capote, and Dog Day Afternoon. Number 10, Pike Dexter, Big Eden. It was uh, nice to see you with Mr. Harden. Glad you're home. Kicking off our list is a character from a romantic comedy drama film that you likely haven't heard of. Pike is the owner of Big Eden's general store, and he eventually falls for the main character. Henry, who is said main character, has just returned to his hometown to see his sick grandfather and is dealing with some unresolved romantic feelings of his own. I mean, I wanted to ask you if you would come to our house for Thanksgiving. Pike keeps his feelings to himself for most of the movie, as he is very shy, but he helps to support Henry by secretly cooking him meals and going out of his way to provide the painter with his preferred art supplies. Am I interrupting you? No. Uh... No, it was just painting. Sometimes the quietest characters speak the most loudly to the audience. So they left the village with nothing. But still they danced. And danced. Number 9, Arnold Beckoff. Torch Song Trilogy. You know, there are easier things in this life than being a drag queen. But I ain't got no choice. Based on the four-hour-long Harvey Firestein play, Torch Song Trilogy also stars the playwright playing the award-winning lead character in the comedy drama he wrote himself. Arnold Beckoff is a gay female impersonator, or drag queen if you will, living in New York City in the 1970s. My name's Ed Reese. My friends call me Ed. After becoming involved with and then being dumped by a bisexual school teacher named Ed, Arnold falls in love with a male model named Alan with whom he hopes to start a family. And uh, you don't have to worry about anything. I was a perfect gentleman. But tragedy strikes and complications with family materialize. And the way in which Arnold deals with all these is what compels us to watch him throughout the film's two-hour runtime. Taxi! Number 8, Frank Ginsberg, Little Miss Sunshine. Why were you unhappy? Uh, well, there are a lot of reasons. Um, mainly, though, I fell in love with someone who didn't love me back. By 2006, Steve Carell was mostly known for his comedic roles. And though Little Miss Sunshine is a black comedy drama, Frank Ginsberg definitely allowed him to show off some of his more serious side. He, uh, he gets down to the end of his life, and he looks back and decides that all those years he suffered, those were the best years of his life, because they made him who he was. Frank may be an academic who once specialized in all things Proust, but that doesn't mean he doesn't feel things very passionately. In fact, it just might be the opposite. Frank was so heartbroken by his boyfriend leaving him for an academic rival that he attempted suicide. Uncle Frank didn't really have an accident. What happened was he tried to kill himself. Now living with his sister's family, Frank's life obviously hasn't been easy. But the bonds he builds with his loved ones show how strong he ultimately is. You can't fly jets if you're colorblind. Number 7, George Falconer, a single man. You're the one who's always saying that we're invisible. Colin Firth plays this tragic figure in a film that portrays one day in a college professor's life after the sudden death of his partner. This Oscar-nominated performance sees George struggling to come to terms with his newfound loneliness and finding solace in his friends and students. I'll tell you what, we're going to forget about Mr. Huxley today, and we're going to talk about fear. Fear, after all, is our real enemy. His journey transcends sexuality, as it's truly a story about finding one's purpose while grieving. The story of loss is universal, and this introspective character really brings a unique beauty to the film that brings it to an entirely new level. Well, if it's going to be a world with no time for sentiment, Grant, then it's not a world I want to live in. Number 6, Anthony Tick Belrose, Mitzi Delbra, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. <laughs> so you're back, from out of space. Before there was RuPaul's Drag Race, there was this Australian dramedy following two drag queens and a transgender woman as they travel across the Australian outback in a tour bus. The main character, Tick, is both excited and nervous to see his estranged wife and son at the hotel they are set to perform at. Mr. Belrose? Yes? Congratulations. It's a boy. Throughout their journey across the desert, Tick learns much about himself and his friends as they meet many strangers along the way. Some friendly, some dangerously homophobic. Who's going to show me the sights? Be my pleasure. Oh. So how about it? 
His story sends a meaningful message about what it really means to be yourself, as well as a father, husband, and friend. Mamma Mia! Number 5. Nick, Parting Glances The rest goes to GMHC for care for poor people with AIDS and not to medical research, because if the feds could spend a trillion bucks on bombs, then they could spend little on research, right? Few are aware that Steve Buscemi's first major film role was a gay man with AIDS who lives with his ex-boyfriend and his new partner. Sorry I didn't tell you about this beforehand, Dad, but you would've freaked. When this shit started going around, I stopped cold, but just my luck, it's the longest f***ing gestation period you ever heard of. In one of the first Hollywood films to address the AIDS epidemic, he plays the jittery Nick, while Robert, the new lover of his ex-boyfriend Michael, is about to leave for two years on a work assignment. Parting Glances follows a 24-hour period of Nick's life as he struggles with his feelings for Michael and his disease. You know the difference between straight guys and gay guys? Uh, I forget. There isn't any. This is a scary and seldom understood fact. Straight guys are jerks, gay guys are jerks. As the character feels like he's running out of time, this makes it easier for the audience to sympathize and understand his trials. Greg Wandelmeyer, what are you doing here? Oh, heaven's real boring. Hang on. Number 4. Patrick, The Perks of Being a Wallflower Listen, I need you to promise that you're not going to say anything to anyone about me and Brad. Ezra Miller's Patrick serves as one of protagonist Charlie's mentors throughout his freshman year of high school. Highly charismatic but unmotivated in school, he's popular among his fellow students and unashamed of his sexuality. <laughs> Though he's a class clown, his story takes a turn for the dramatic when his secret relationship with Brad, a football player, takes a turn for the worse. Whatever, faggot. <laughs> what did you just call me? I just called you a faggot. While Brad is secretive about his sexuality, Patrick foregoes the stereotypical tortured gay teen storyline and is a refreshing change of pace for a young male gay character. He also proves to be Charlie and Sam's most loyal friend. Come on, let's keep the train rolling. Suburban legend. Charlie. Number three, Armand Goldman, The Birdcage. You do an eclectic celebration of the dance. You do fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. In this classic Robin Williams performance, he plays against type as the straight man. We're talking about the stock character of comedies here, not the character's sexuality, so no pun intended. I'm pretty sure you called my bluff. Partnered with dramatic drag queen Albert, he's placed in a difficult situation when his son intends to marry the daughter of a conservative senator. How I would have loved to have seen your children. Shouldn't you be holding the crucifix? It is the prop for martyrs. He's forced to pretend that his partner is his brother, which proves to be a difficult task. I'm not wearing any makeup. I'm just a guy. What about those? Beset by the two men and his family, Armand takes strides to balance being a good father with being a good partner, even when the two conflict. Oh. I know! I can't get this big lug to buy a new suit! Armand, I think they're picking on us. Yeah. Oh, well! Lucky for us, because this struggle provides us with plenty of hilarious moments, as well as a wonderfully likable lead. While Albert was also in consideration for this list, it's hard to compete with one of Hollywood's favorite funny men nailing this performance. We are Number two, Hal Fields, Beginners. I went to Akbar tonight. You did? Yeah, no, they had some wonderfully loud music. In 2011, Christopher Plummer became the oldest actor ever to win an Oscar for this performance. I don't want to be just theoretically gay. Tired of being theoretically gay, Hal comes out at age 75, after the death of his wife, and begins a relationship with a man. My father told me he was gay. He had just turned 75. I'm gay. I always remember him wearing a purple sweater when he told me this, but actually he wore a robe. The movie follows his son Oliver as he remembers the final moments of his father's life through flashbacks and begins a new relationship. Trying to make the most of the rest of his life, Hal's positive attitude endears him to the audience, making his ultimate fate all the more emotional. What do you got in there? A slug. Andy, you can't bring that kind of thing, can you? No, I can. Look at oh. oh. He teaches Oliver a thing or two about love along the way, and is a funny, loving father that anybody would love to have. Here's the healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> healthcare. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I have to draw you. No, no, no. Absolutely not. I'm a lot more shy than people think. I give off the wrong impression. I have to. I haven't sketched anything in weeks. See, I don't want the strippers one too. I want you. <laughs> there he is. Hey! Scotty J, how are ya? You know, you know. <laughs> Who's this? Eddie, this is Scotty J. He's a friend. He works on some of the films. Nice oh, to meet you. Yeah, me too. It's amazing the clarity that comes with psychotic jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Ennis Delmar, Brokeback Mountain. Speak for yourself. You may be a sinner, but I ain't yet had the opportunity. Choosing between Ennis and Jake Hall's Jack Twist was a tough choice, as either could have taken our top spot. I wish I knew how to quit you. But the late Heath Ledger's stunning performance in Ang Lee's romantic drama ultimately won out. Then why don't you... Why don't you just let me be, huh? When Ennis and Jack are sent to the mountains of Wyoming to herd sheep, they begin a sexual relationship that grows emotional and complicated, and endures for years, even when they both marry women. You sure that foreman won't fire you for taking off? You know that foreman, he owes me. I, I worked through a blizzard last Christmas, you remember that? Besides, it'll only be a couple days. His struggle with his sexuality and his fear of being attacked for it makes his story a tragic portrayal of the dark reaction society once had, and sometimes still have, towards LGBT individuals. He was only 39 years old. Hello. Unforgettable and unflinching, Ennis is an icon of gay cinema. Well, I guess I'll see you around, huh? Do you agree with our list? Who is your favorite gay male character? What did you say? You hurt me. I've had quite enough. For more interesting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Ah, oh, have I loved the sun. Yes, it's glorious, isn't it? Mm. You know, you could use some more sun. Take a couple of days off.